Well, something I've been hearing recently from different sources is a phrase, brace for impact. And it came from a couple of prophetic voices. One person had a dream in which they saw a plane crash, spiritually speaking, not literally. Another person said they saw a train collision. And I've been hearing it over and over again, braced for impact. What does it mean? I mean, in terms of a plane uh, crash or emergency landed, it means get ready, get into position for what's about to happen, for a crash landing or an emergency landing somewhere that's unexpected. Get into the correct position so you can minimize the injuries to yourself and even save your life. And I believe there is a need to brace for impact spiritually as we go forward into this decade with all that's going on in the world. God is saying, be prepared, be in the right position, get in, in, into me and, and don't be in the world when these things hit. Because if you're in me, you're going to survive and even more so you're going to thrive. But if you're in the world and you're in stress, you're in fear, then you're going to feel the full force of any uh, shaking or any world catastrophe or event that might take place. You know, in 2009, there was a, a plane that hit a flock of birds taken off from New York and uh, they basically had to make an emergency crash landing. And uh, they, they, they told everyone, brace for impact, brace, brace, brace. And everyone did. And amazingly, that plane didn't crash, but it landed on the Hudson River. There's a movie about it now, and they now call it the miracle on the Hudson River because everyone survived and no one had any life sustaining threatening injuries. And it was because, um, oh, I believe it was because of God, you know, there was a Catholic passenger that said he was praying and he felt like they were literally coming down on eagle's wings. And, you know, God will be with us in these storms, in these shakings, in these, um, in these events that, that take the world by surprise, that suddenly come in like a flood. And you think, why has this happened? Why has this uh, taken place? What is going on? I, I just really am spinning and reeling from hearing about this. And it could be in all sorts of ways. You know, we're hearing talk of financial crashes. We're hearing talk of... Uh, food shortages and potential famines across the world. We're hearing about, you know, the, the world or the church rather going into the world, falling away and disowning Christ and, and coming up with all these new types of doctrine and, and kind of just stuff that isn't according to the Bible. And it can shake you to the core if you're not rooted in Christ. So I want to give you some, uh, some points today, three key points as to how we can effectively brace for impact with all that's going on right now and to come, because that we know there's stuff that's going to come. It's inevitable. Jesus said there would be birth pangs all the way up until I return and a new creation and a new world that's ruled by me is given birth. And that's what we're looking forward to. That's what we're moving ahead towards, guys. But in the meantime, let's brace for impact in the best possible way. And the first way is... <laughs> to stand on the word. You know, if you're in a plane and you're about to make an emergency landing, the first, uh, the first action you need to do is to sit down. You know, normally you're sitting down on a plane, so that's standard, but you need to sit down and put your feet firmly on the floor. And when I hear this, it makes me think of the need to stand on God's word. Are you standing on the word or are you perplexed and agitated by the news of the world. I tell you, I, I try now to skim read the news and stay in the word. If I stay in the news and skim read my Bible, listen, I might as well give up now because I know I'm not going to stand. I'm, I'm going to be swayed by what's going on in the world. I'm going to be swayed by the next event, the next, the next um, shaking, the next unexpected um, world global situation that's going on and there's plenty going on and there's plenty more to come but listen when you stay in the word you become rooted you become established you become fixed 
on the word. You know, if the world says famine, we say prosperity. If the world says doom, we say hope. (laughs) If the world says financial crash, we say abundance in Jesus name. Do you believe it? Are you in the word today or is are you in the news? Are you in the world and are you being shaken? There's only one way and that's to stand on the word. You know, Jesus said the wise man or the wise woman, whoever they are, builds their house on the rock by reading the word and living in the word. And when the storm comes, your house will stay firm. It will not be moved. Secondly, we need to get into rest. You know, the next position that you need to make or get into is is by putting your arms and your elbows into your body and bending over your thighs. (laughs) You know, it's a funny picture, but there's there's a reason for this because it does, it lessens the impact when you're in this position rather than upright, standing, jumping around, whatever. And to me, this reminds me of the need to get into rest because you could literally fall asleep in this position, leaning over. And God is saying, get into rest this year, get into rest this new Hebrew year, get into rest for the rest of this decade. With all that's going on, you say, can you sleep in a storm, Luke? Of course you can. Jesus slept on the boat in the middle of a tempest. And guess what? Jesus lives in us. He's the hope of glory in our hearts. And if Christ is in us, we can sleep through the storms as well. I don't mean be spiritually asleep. I mean, we can rest. We can abide in him. We can be at peace when the world is saying chaos, (laughs) when the world is saying it's all going downhill quickly. We can say, actually, we know where we belong. We know where we're going and we're not troubled. We're not put off or dismayed. And I want to say right now, if you're in a position, if you're in a job, maybe a relationship um, or or even a, a location and you have not got peace, you need to seriously think about whether you're meant to be there. You know, someone's been coming to us for advice about a particular job they're in and they've got no peace whatsoever and they really want to get out. And we're saying, listen, if the grace isn't there, why stay there? God will give you grace for you to be wherever you're meant to be, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's a church, whether it's an area, whether it's a city, you will have a grace. And listen, we all go through challenges. We all hit times where um, everything's just up in the air and we don't feel like going in. We don't feel like getting up and that's natural. But if you're like that every single day, then there's a problem. Then you need to think, how do I get out of this? What steps do I need to take that are gonna enable me to to get into a place of rest, calm, tranquility, and peace in the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says the Lord is our shepherd and he leads us beside still waters, not raging waters, not, not waters that are gonna threaten to overwhelm us, but still waters where we can see our reflection, where we can see the reflection of Jesus in our lives. If you're not at that place today, you need to ask the Holy Spirit, lead me. Jesus as the shepherd, lead me beside still waters. I wanna walk in that peace. As you know, um, Pauline has set aside three months leading up to November to rest. Is that's all it is. It's not to fast, pray, or do anything else, or warfare. It's to rest in God, because that's where the power is. That's where the strength is. It says those who, who you know, abide in God, they will rise up on eagles' wings. Be still and know that I am God. How can you know that he's God if you're not still? I want you, and I pray that you'll get to that place today where you're still, you're at, you're at peace with yourself even, and with those around you, and you're not um, on, on turbulent waves. And the more we practice this, guys, the more we're going to get into it, and the, the greater it will become. That peace is powerful. It's so powerful. And finally, the last maneuver you have to make on an aeroplane if it's coming in for a crash landing is to put your head onto the object in front of you, i.e. the chair in front of you or the the bulkhead that's before you. This is to minimize the impact on your head, which is the most important part of your body, uh, you could say, and and it stops you from flying into it at full force. And you know, when when I think of this, I just think of the need 
to lean on Jesus? Are you truly leaning on Jesus today or are you leaning on yourself? You know, maybe you've got uh, a good deal of money in the bank and you're leaning on your riches. You're leaning on your financial position and that's giving you security. That can change in an instant. There was a man, a Hindu man, he didn't know God and the 2008 crash came and he was a successful businessman. But when it came, he lost everything and even his family was falling apart at that time and that led him to Jesus. <laughs> you know, if your life is falling apart, it could be because you're not leaning on Jesus. You're not in him today. You're not giving him everything. He wants everything. He wants all your cares and worries. You know, even if you need clothes today, food, drink, you know, you need uh, protection, you need uh, uh, assurance about your family and their situation. It's not going to come through any other means but through Jesus. You've got to lean on him for everything. He wants to be our all in all. The Bible says, commit all that you do to the Lord, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Amen. Listen, there's another way we can look at this phrase, brace for impact. And that is, we can, we can see the world having to brace for impact when the gospel goes out, when the power of God is displayed, when we rise up to be the men and women that God has called us to be, when we speak the truth in the power of the Holy Spirit, that's when the world has to brace for impact. That's when the, the, the kingdom of God comes crashing in and people think, where did that come from? I didn't see that coming. I didn't know that my life could be so transformed like it has now. That's why in the early church, when the Holy Spirit came down at Pentecost, they said, these men and these women, these people have turned the world upside down. Are you ready to turn this world upside down? You know, the enemy might be coming in like a flood today, but God wants to raise up a standard against him in Jesus' name. And I pray right now he will in your life. I pray that you will rise up. You will rise up with the water and you won't go down and that you will be a force for good in this day, in this hour, at this time. And you won't be worrying about what's coming, but the devil will be worried about you getting out and going out and, and being sought and light in this world in Jesus' name. Bless you guys. If you haven't already, subscribe, like the video and watch out for more messages in Jesus' name.